radio, most all types of radio is off-grid. Radio is off-grid. Ham radio is off-grid. GMRS radio is off-grid. CB, marine band, commercial band, FRS, insert radio service here is off-grid. We're going to talk about that right after the recent AT&T outage where 72,000 customers were without service for one day in the North Texas area, but across the nation as well. Check this out. This video comes from many comments, many questions that I get on videos that I have about what is radio and how does it differ from off-grid communications, okay? So in a nutshell, radio is off-grid because it doesn't require a network or an infrastructure. So you might be aware that there was a widespread cell phone outage that left thousands of users without service. This was on February 22nd of 2024. Side note here, I learned about, this was a day that there was an RV show in Dallas and I was, I was driving to the RV show to record some videos for my second channel, my unplugged channel, which I have. And as I got into the truck, I was going to the bank, I was getting some cash out for uh, to, to go to the RV show in case I found something I wanted to buy, some accessories or whatnot. And on the repeater, on the local repeater, I had heard some guys talking about a cell phone outage. They're like, well, yeah, the cell phone network is down. And I'm like, cell phone network, what does that mean? Cell phone network is down? It's down? Uh, these guys, I don't know what these guys are talking about. I got into the middle of this conversation. I didn't hear the context of this conversation. I didn't know what they were talking about. Well, turns out <laughs> I went back home and took an Uber down to the RV show because guess what? Um, I didn't want to park my truck down there. I just thought it was a little bit easier. And as I get in the car and get away from the Wi-Fi in my house and start typing on my phone, AT&T, I had no cell service. And I'm like, wow, they, uh, they weren't, they weren't kidding. Now I had my mint mobile SIM card in my R finder M six phone and it worked great. So I just Googled it and I said, AT&T network outage. And they're like, yeah, AT&T is down across the nation right now. I'm like, wow, that, that is a thing. So I have said numerous times in the past, I've said two things about your cell phone. Your cell phone is a great tool. Keep it and use it when you can. Okay. At no point in time have I ever said you should get rid of your cell phone and just use a radio. No, I try to tell you, and in fact, I've said multiple times that you should have a, a smartphone, a cell phone. You should have a ham radio. You should have a CB radio. You should have a GMRS license, a GMRS radio. Maybe even a marine band radio if you live near the coast somewhere. I use marine band sometimes and monitor it when I'm in Galveston at my beach house, my rental house down there. I don't have a beach house. I have a rental house down there that I rent to people. And then I use when it's not being rented. Moving on. So I, so I use Marine Band down there. I monitor it sometimes. You should have all of the things. I'm not telling you that you should get rid of something and, and in lieu of something else. But I did want to explain real quick what the difference was. Okay. So here's a little clip from this news article on NPR. Tens of thousands of AT&T customers across the country found themselves without cellular service this morning. This caused disruptions to 911 calls that people were trying to make on their cell phones today. The White House said that both the FBI and Homeland Security are helping the Federal Communications Commission to get to the bottom of what happened. You know it's a bad day when the FCC gets involved in your business. Mm -hmm. AT&T, you know that's a bad day. <laughs> So anyway, so it goes on to talk about how it was not, they claim that it was not a cyber attack. And I saw the best thing I saw was on Twitter where someone said, I guarantee this is what happened. Okay. Someone made a, a change management update without approval and caused a, a service to start running that only George knew how to fix. And they, and he retired two years ago and took his proprietary laptop with him. I'm like, if you've ever worked in the IT world, I'm like, yeah, that's that's probably what happened. Even at AT and T, so <laughs> so AT and T, and I I heard it affected uh, small parts of Verizon and T Mobile as well. I'm not sure how true that is. AT and T was down for six or seven hours that day. Okay, and now they're going to give us all five dollars as a compensation. Five dollars. Okay, five dollars. I paid eighty dollars a month. Granted, it was only for part of a day. Okay. AT&T says it will give affected customers $5 to each to compensate for last week's cell phone outage that left many without service for hours. Now, here's the thing. How does a cell phone network work as compared to a radio? Now, again, this is not going to be specifically ham radio. We're talking about radio here, not just ham radio. Ham radio is the best radio service out there, in my opinion. I've done videos on that before. So ham radio versus CB versus GMRS versus FRS versus MERS versus Marine Band versus all these things. Ham radio offers you the most features, but I have a CB in my truck 
Well, I have a CB I'm about to put in my truck. I have a GMRS license. I have a GMRS radio in the truck. And like I said a minute ago, I have a Marine Man radio that I monitor when I'm at the coast. So and a cell phone network, when you pick up your mobile phone, mobile TV phone, I don't know what that means. iPhone, Android, whatever. Okay. If you have an old flip phone, this applies to that too. Okay. If you pick up your phone and dial someone, if I was to dial my wife right now, who's inside the house, I'm in the shack, she's in the house. It would go through this repeater tower here, whatever the closest repeater tower is. It might bounce off of a satellite, depending on where you're calling to. If I'm calling locally, it's not going to bounce off of a satellite. But it does go to this repeater tower, and then the signal goes back down to my wife's cell phone. It makes the connection through the repeater tower, as you see right here. Here's another um, diagram of it. Mobile phone to a mobile base station, mobile phone base station, which is a repeater, a repeater tower. The telephone switch is uh, used for uh, interconnecting uh, non-cellular networks like uh, old landline networks, business telephones and whatnot, fixed telephone like it says right there. And it uh, it switches between mobile ra mobile base stations, cell networks, and uh, fixed, uh, fixed telephone, what they call POTS, plain old telephone service. It's your copper lines that are still buried that are still used in parts of the country, parts of the world actually. So your mobile phone goes from the phone to phone but it has to go through all of these repeaters. Now, I've heard people say before that your smartphone is never going to go down because all of the repeater sites have battery backup and solar. So even if there was an outage for a half a day or if a tornado, hurricane, something like that, all of the repeater sites have battery backup power. And for the most part, I think that that's true. I think they have battery backup power for the most part today. However, the network was down last week with battery backup, okay? And that was a network issue. It wasn't that the cell towers, the physical hardware towers themselves had been damaged or something. It was a software networking issue. I didn't read too far into it. I don't know what the cause, uh, the exact cause was. They said it was, they were, they were guesstimating that it was a cyber attack. They claim up and down that it was not a cyber attack. It was probably just someone tripped over a cord somewhere and knocked half the network out whatever whatever the cause the cause for the for the purposes of this video the cause is irrelevant the point is that the network was down even though your cell towers were up and powered on maybe with backup power maybe with regular um shore power with uh, alternating current shore power which is what they run on normally doesn't matter it was still down for several hours so that can happen it happened in 2024. It happened it, at the time of this recording. It was six days. No, it was four days ago at the time of this recording, early 2024. So it can still happen. So what's the difference between that? Because you cannot pick up this and call another phone directly. So what's the difference between that and a radio? I'll tell you right here. There's two radios right here. These are ham radios. I've currently got them each set for 146.400 megahertz simplex. These are analog radios. And if I key this one up, there's probably going to be buzzing in it. But KC5 HWB testing from one radio to the next. KC5 HWB testing from uh, radio B to radio A. Radio A to radio B testing one, two, three. These radios are talking to one another directly through the air. And if there's anyone else around here monitoring this frequency, I'm only tra I'm transmitting on low power on both of them. I'm transmitting directly to radio to radio. They require no network, no network, no cell towers, no satellites, no network of any kind. They require nothing. They can talk to direct direct. And that is what your smartphone cannot do. Now, some people are talking about satellite phones. And you know what? I think if you want to pay for a satellite phone, I think it's a great thing to have. I would love to have a satellite phone, okay? But I pulled up satellitephonestore.com, and I did some poking around in here a little bit ago before I started the video. And you can shop satellite phones. I'm going to go here, and there's there's um, Global Star, Th Thraya in Europe and Asia, and Marsat, in Marsat, ISAT phone, and Iridium. I think most people have probably heard of Iridium. That's the one I've heard of. Okay, so you can come over here and you can buy some Iridium phones. There's a there's a handheld right there. There's like a, a satellite hotspot. There's a mobile satellite internet Wi-Fi hotspot. This whole this whole kit right here is like sixteen hundred dollars right there. Okay, so you can go back here and that you know what? And if it was just this, let's this this Iridium Extreme nine five seven five satellite phone kit, fourteen hundred bucks. $1,400 for this, okay? Now, I, I talk about the R-Finder M6 and B1 Plus devices, and they're about $1,200 right now. But uh, they're full-fledged Android devices, and they have built-in 
two-way radios, dual band, two meters and 440, that are part 90, so they're full open transmit on the two meter and 440 band. So the R-Finder phones are without uh, bloatware, without service, without contracts and whatnot. That's why you pay full price for them. Same thing here, I guess. Okay, but here is the kicker. Here's the kicker about a satellite phone, okay? Because this is the real thing that I'm going to make sure that you guys can see the drop down here. So we're going to go here, over here to service plans, and we're going to talk about Iridium phone time. Now, before we go there, I'm going to show you these satellite phone plans. And uh, if you've never looked these up, these might be a surprise to you. But before we go there, I'd like to thank our sponsor today. Mezzi and Plomi Coax is the sponsor of this video. Remember, you can always save a 10% discount at the Gigaparts website with the coupon code of HR2Cables. The link will be in the description below for this and for several other things. But thank you, Mezzi and Plomi, for sponsoring this video. Some great coax for your VHF, UHF stations, as well as HF. Service plans for Iridium. This is called uh, Iridium uh, Phone Airtime. That's what I clicked on. So they have a Go Executive, a Go Plan, Iridium Go. That's not terrible. The Go 40 is 40 minutes a month for $65 a month. The Go 90 is $105 a month for 90 minutes a month. A month. I don't know if these roll over or not. Let's see. $1.54 each additional minute. 99 cents each additional text. So that right there. Okay, that's that's kind of... You know, and this is on the months you don't, you, you don't use the stuff. Okay, this right here is a top satellite phone plans monthly and prepaid. So that I think these are prepaid each. Iridium monthly service plans, uninterrupted premium service minutes. This one does have rollover. Rollover, okay, so for $10, for an extra $10 a month, you can get rollover minutes. And for an extra $15 a month, you can get a USA phone number. Okay, if you're not in the USA, those of you who are watching from outside of the USA, thank you for watching uh, this channel. I don't say that enough. Thank you for watching if you're outside of the USA. Put a comment in the description below. Let me know where you are right now. 10 minutes monthly plan for $65 a month. Each additional minute is about $1.50. 20 minutes a month is $70. 40 minutes a month is $76. Okay, so you can see the ridiculous charges here. Now, if you do a lot of traveling, if you live out in the sticks, if you live out away from the cell network, if your life consists of something where you just don't have good access to a cell network or maybe even a radio tower of some sort, perhaps that's a good option for you. You do have that option, but even with even with the satellite, you are dependent on the satellite. The satellite phones can't talk to one another. They talk through the satellite in orbit back down to the next phone wherever you're calling, a landline, mobile cell phone network through a switch or whatever you're or another sat phone okay it's still going through a satellite so if something happens to that satellite it gets hacked it gets damaged whatever it goes down because someone pushed an update to it that they shouldn't have done if you ever let at&t get a hold of the satellite phones that could happen you never know you know if we have a deep impact situation and a big asteroid hits it i don't know it's still dependent it's still the satellite phone is still depending on a network I have Starlink. I, I like my Starlink internet service and it's great, but I can't, if I can't reach the satellite from my Starlink dish, when we're camping at Montesano State Park in Huntsville every August for the ham fest, there's 30 to 40 foot tall trees throughout that state park, beautiful state park, but the Starlink satellite can't see the sky from there. So it can't get a direct link to the satellite, which it needs to run internet. Same thing for your satellite phone. If you can't get a direct line of sight to the sky, you may or may not be able to get service. So with an actual radio, GMRS included, FRS included, you've got point-to-point -point contact that you don't have with any other service in the world right now. And that's why radio is off-grid, because you can take your family, take your friends, take your buddies out away from everything. Get as far out in the woods as you want to, as far out in the ocean as you want to. And if each of you has one of these on the same frequency, you can talk to one another and you don't have to worry about a network of satellites or a network of 4G, 5G towers or a network that someone can take down with a big mistake affecting it. So radio is off grid. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. 73.